Hi, I'm Lisa. Before we dive into my story, please take a moment to like and subscribe for more tales like this. Living in the bustling heart of the city, I had carved out a comfortable life for myself. At 32, I worked in a well-respected firm downtown, enjoying the fruits of my labor and the company of my new husband, Matthew. We had recently tied the knot after a whirlwind romance, and life seemed almost perfect. With dreams bigger than our budget, we decided to buy a two-family home that needed some love and care. Our plan? Renovated into our dream residence, a place where love and family could flourish. One crisp autumn evening, as we discussed our renovation blueprints, Matthew dropped a bombshell that his parents were struggling under a mountain of debt. $150,000 in the red, he confessed, his voice barely a whisper. The weight of such a revelation should have made me reconsider our plans, but looking into his hopeful eyes, something in me just couldn't turn away. You know we can't just leave them in this mess, Matthew said, squeezing my hand. They're family now. Family. That word meant the world to me. Despite the financial risk, I agreed to help. Not only would we clear their $150,000 debt, but I also committed to footing the bill for our home's $100,000 renovations. My savings, which I had painstakingly accumulated over years of overtime and skipped vacations, would cover it. The renovations began soon after. We tore down walls and built new ones, each stroke of the hammer a step towards our shared future. During the day, I juggled spreadsheets and client meetings, and in the evenings, I was engulfed in fabric swatches and paint samples. Matthew and I spent countless nights discussing textures and tiles, often falling asleep amidst piles of catalogs and plans. It's going to be beautiful, Lisa. Thanks for doing this for us, Matthew would say, his enthusiasm contagious. As weeks turned into months, the house slowly transformed, and so did our relationship. Matthew's parents, Nancy and Bill, became a constant presence, often stopping by to check on the progress or share a meal. They always praised my dedication and generosity. Oh, Lisa, we are so blessed to have you in our family. This house, it's going to be a fresh start for all of us, Nancy said one evening, her eyes gleaming with tears of gratitude. Their words warmed my heart. I felt like I was building more than just a house. I was building a legacy, a sanctuary where our families could grow together. With every new fixture and fitting that was installed, it felt like we were cementing our bonds, creating something lasting. But life has a funny way of revealing the true colors of people when you least expect it. As the house neared completion, I remained blissfully unaware of the storm that was brewing, a storm that would threaten to tear down everything I had worked so hard to build. But for now, I clung to the belief that what we were creating was beautiful, and that the sacrifices I was making would forge a future filled with love and prosperity for Matthew and me, and for the family we hoped to one day grow. The smell of fresh paint filled the air, a tangible sign of the new beginnings I had dreamed of as the renovations drew to a close. It was late one evening, and I had just returned from a grueling day at the office. Thinking I'd surprise Matthew and his parents with takeout from their favorite Chinese restaurant, I quietly entered the house, eager to see their faces light up. But as I approached the living room, the muffled sounds of conversation halted me in my tracks. Can't believe how easy it was. Lisa just opened up her checkbook without a second thought. I heard Matthew laugh. The coldness in his voice was something I hadn't heard before. Yeah, she's like a little money tree, isn't she? Bill chortled in response. The mockery in his tone stung sharply. Once the debt's cleared, we can finally get rid of her and move on. I've already told Vanessa about the house. She loves it, Matthew continued, his words slicing through the air like a knife. I stood frozen the bags of food slipping from my grip and thudding onto the floor. The shock was paralyzing. Tears threatened to spill, but anger quickly swallowed them. My heart raced as I processed their betrayal. It wasn't just Matthew. It was all of them, together against me. Taking a deep breath to steady my shaking hands, I composed myself and stepped into the room, my presence startling them into silence. What's this about getting rid of me and moving someone named Vanessa in? My voice was calm, but beneath the surface, a storm was raging. Matthew stared, his expression shifting from shock to defiance. Lisa, you weren't supposed to hear that. So, it's true then. All this time, your kindness was just a facade. Nancy, always the peacemaker, tried to soften the blow. 
Lisa, honey, it's not like that. We just... Save it, Nancy. I've heard enough. I cut her off, the betrayal turning my sorrow into resolve. You think you can use me and toss me aside? Well, I have news for you. I'm not going anywhere. Matthew scoffed. You think you can stop us? The house is almost paid off, and then you'll have no hold over us. That's where you're wrong, I said, my voice steady. You see, the house and all the debts are still in my name. Nothing has been transferred yet. I was waiting for the right moment to surprise you all with the deed transfer as a gift. Looks like I found out just in time what my generosity would have gotten me. The color drained from Matthew's face, and Bill looked as if he'd been punched in the stomach. They had played their cards, and now they knew they had lost. I suggest you rethink your plans, I said, turning to leave the room, because I'm rewriting mine. As I walked away, the weight of the lies they had woven felt heavy, but a fierce determination had taken root. They thought they could manipulate me, but I would be the one to end this game. I would secure my future, one they would have no part in. After the initial shockwaves of the betrayal had rippled through, I realized it was time to confront Matthew directly. We met in the privacy of our half-renovated living room, where the walls we had dreamt of filling with memories now felt like silent witnesses to our crumbling marriage. I faced him squarely, the resolve in my voice stronger than the hammering of my heart. So, Matthew, how long has Vanessa been part of our future plans? Matthew's posture deflated under the weight of his exposed secrets. I... Lisa, it's not what you think. Not what I think? I heard everything, Matthew. There's nothing to interpret. How long? I pressed, needing to hear him admit it. It started a few months ago, he confessed, avoiding my gaze. But it doesn't change how I feel about... Save it! I interrupted, my patience worn thin. I don't care about your feelings now. What I care about is this. I waved a hand around the room. All of this was built on lies. Seeing him so vulnerable, so caught, part of me felt a vindictive satisfaction. You know, Matthew, all the financial arrangements, the house, the debt, it's all still in my name. You and your parents haven't been relieved of anything yet. The color drained from his face as the gravity of the situation sank in. Lisa, please. We can work this out. Work this out? I scoffed. While you plan to move her into the house I paid for, you must think I'm a fool. No, it's not like that, Matthew stammered. It just... happened. It just happened, I repeated mockingly. And it just happens that I'm the only one financially committed here. Well, here's what's going to happen next. Matthew braced himself, a look of desperation etching his features. I'm going to secure what's mine. The house will be sold. And from the profits, after clearing the remaining debt, I'll take what I'm owed. As for you and your parents, you will need to find a new place to live. But Lisa, this is our home, Matthew pleaded, his voice breaking. Our home was a lie, Matthew. And I won't live in a lie. Not anymore. My voice was firm, resolute, a stark contrast to the turmoil inside me. As I walked away from him, the finality of our conversation hung heavily in the air. There was no going back. The man I loved and trusted had betrayed me, and his parents were accomplices in his deceit. It was clear what needed to be done. The next steps would be legally and emotionally daunting, but necessary. I would protect my investments and my heart. No longer would I be manipulated by those who claimed to love me while plotting my downfall behind closed backs. This chapter of my life was closing, and a new, more guarded one was about to begin. The morning after my confrontation with Matthew, I woke up determined to reclaim my life. The first order of business was a visit to my lawyer's office, where I laid out everything, the betrayal, the financial deception, and my plan to untangle myself from this mess. My lawyer, a seasoned professional with a knack for navigating complex divorce cases, listened intently, occasionally jotting down notes. We'll file for divorce on grounds of infidelity and deceit. You have a strong case for alimony and financial compensation. Not just from Matthew, but potentially his partner as well, my lawyer explained. Given the substantial investment you made in the house and the fact that none of the debts were legally transferred, you're well positioned to recover most, if not all, of your funds. Armed with legal advice, I approached the situation with a new level of Ruth a lawyer's appointment and a series of strategic moves had prepared me to take control. I formally demanded alimony from Matthew, 
and pursued financial compensation from his girlfriend, Vanessa, who had knowingly disrupted our marital estate. With the legal gears in motion, I focused on the house. It was more than a building. It was the embodiment of my generosity and Matthew's betrayal. Selling it became symbolic, letting go of the past and securing my future. I put the house on the market, and due to the renovations and the booming real estate trends, it sold quickly and for a profit. The sale of the house not only allowed me to clear all the outstanding debts, but also left me with a significant surplus. I allocated these funds wisely, setting up a robust financial buffer that would ensure I wouldn't need to depend on anyone else ever again. Throughout this process, the reactions from Matthew and his parents were a mix of disbelief and anger. They tried to negotiate, to plead, but I was resolute. The days of me being manipulated were over. I was not just securing my financial standing. I was reclaiming my dignity and autonomy. As I sat down with my financial advisor to discuss investment opportunities for the nest egg I had secured, I felt a sense of empowerment. The betrayal had hurt me deeply, but it had also shown me my own strength and resilience. I was making decisions that prioritized my well-being and financial independence. My life was rapidly changing, and though part of me grieved the loss of what I thought my marriage would be, a larger part of me was excited for what was to come. I was free from the deceit and financial burden imposed by those I had trusted most, and I was stepping into a new phase of life, one where I was the sole architect of my destiny. Sitting in the sunlit corner of my new cozier home, I finally felt a sense of peace. The smaller space was not just a house, it was a sanctuary, a tangible representation of my new beginning. Here, there were no echoes of deceit, no shadows of betrayal, just the quiet comfort of a place where I could be truly myself surrounded by people I trust, friends who had stood by me, who had shown their true colors when I needed them most. The journey here hadn't been easy. The revelations about Matthew and his parents, the confrontation, the divorce, it had all taken a toll. But as I looked around my new home, every item I chose, every decoration I hung, represented a choice made by me, for me. This autonomy was hard-earned, and I cherished it with all my heart. Matthew and his parents had tried to reach out, their messages oscillating between apologies and anger, attempts at reconciliation and blame. But I had learned my lesson. My generosity had once been my Achilles heel, manipulated by those I loved. Now, it was a guarded treasure, extended only to those who proved worthy. The financial windfall from the house sale had been wisely invested, creating a safety net that allowed me to sleep soundly at night. My days were no longer filled with worries about debts or deceit. Instead, I focused on my career, taking on new projects and challenges that excited me, and spending my free time exploring hobbies I had always put off. I also became more involved in the community, volunteering and participating in local events. This engagement brought new friendships and connections that enriched my life, filling it with genuine relationships that offered support and joy. Reflecting on everything that had transpired, I realized that I had emerged from this ordeal stronger and more secure. The betrayal had been a harsh teacher, but the lessons were invaluable. I learned to trust, but not naively. To give, but not without boundaries. To love, but not at the expense of my self-worth. As I sat there, the evening sun casting long shadows across the room, I felt a surge of gratitude. Yes, the past had been painful, but it had led me to this moment of contentment. My life was once again my own, and the future was bright with promise. I had promised myself never to let my generosity be mistaken for weakness again. And with every decision I made, every boundary I set, I honored that promise. For anyone who might be going through similar trials, know this. You have the strength to overcome, to rebuild, to find happiness on your terms. And that brings us to the end of Lisa's journey of self-reclamation and empowerment. Now. Here's a question for you all. Do you believe that financial independence is crucial for personal autonomy and relationships? Or can true partnerships exist without such independence? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Your insights not only help us delve deeper into these complex dynamics, but also support others in our community who might be facing similar situations. If you enjoyed this story and the discussion it sparked, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Your support helps us keep these stories coming and our community growing.
Thanks for watching, and don't forget to comment.